Hey, what's going on everybody? I'm Harvey Jurgen. My partner and I, Josh Hively, run Simple Solutions Real Estate here in Columbus, Ohio. Welcome to episode two of Beers and Business. Today we're featuring the Rally Cap Lager from Sonder Brewing in Mason, Ohio, which is an appropriate beer for today because we sit down with Mitch Dominski, and Mitch and I both share baseball as a pastime. Sonder also has this cool definition on the side of their can that says that Sonder means the realization that each person has a unique story, which is the reason why we started this series and the reason we're sitting down with Mitch today. Uh, Sonder also has a cool podcast, the Sonder Stories podcast, you wanna check that out. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. We sit down with Mitch Dominski of Solutions for Real Estate and we talk about his journey to owning two businesses and 30 rental units. We also talk about what it takes to be a successful business owner, to be a good dad, and to sustain a good, healthy, happy marriage for 25 plus years, even when you're working with your spouse. Stick around to the end where we talk about a funny story Mitch has about an inflatable water slide. Hope you enjoy. All right. Mitch Dominski. Harvey. Who are you? Josh. Who are who am you? I? Yeah, who are you? What what do you do? Mm-hmm. How did you get here to Columbus, Ohio doing what you do? Gosh, where do I start, right? The very um, beginning. I'll start at the very beginning. Back in 1965. No. <laughs> I grew up in Elyria, uh, Ohio. Um, Lorraine County, it's on the west side of Cleveland. Very blue collar town. Uh, my parents, um, um, both entrepreneurs. Um, oh, really? More my mom than my dad. My dad uh, started a couple of businesses. Uh, my mom cut hair. You know, she's an entrepreneur for 50 years behind a chair. And my uncles were a big influence on me too because they owned car dealerships and rent a car place and a Napa store. So it's kind of, I kind of grew up around it. But I also saw like my dad. He, I think he got caught up in the. Um, they were getting rid of the. Um, uh, you know the pensions and Big Brother taking care of um, you know they kind of we saw the, the front end of that so my dad would every five or seven years lose his job and I think that affected me as far as uh, stability not that it was unstable you know as kids you don't know um, if anything's going wrong and it wasn't it was just like hey dad's home a lot yeah you know? <laughs> so um, but uh, I went to Ohio State and I graduated. So your dad, he did have his own businesses too? He right? did. Okay. He did for a couple of years. He was a draftsman before CAD came out. Okay. And uh, he had a great contract with uh, Invacare. And uh, he was a technician, but he wasn't a business owner, meaning that he did not go out and get more business. So he, was, he loved sitting at the table doing the work, but the business part of it, he hey, I got work to do, so why do I need to go out and get more? And so I think right. okay. him looking back, that's probably what he'd tell you. Okay. But uh, graduated from Ohio State while I was there. I worked in telecom, and that was my first job coming out of, of school, and I was in Dayton. And uh, one of my customers, uh, they had a new technology where they were installing pay phones into prisons, okay, so inmate pay phones. And uh, they ended up interviewing me after four or five people. And I ended up um, saying, hey, look, if I can prove myself, I'd like to buy in. So mm-hmm. they gave me a year to prove my numbers. After four months, they pulled me off the street because they couldn't keep up. So I ended up buying in. And we saw real quickly that that business was um, um, getting the the margins were getting smaller so we ended up um, preparing the company to um, sell and so the next question was what am I going to do next and you know like everybody I looked into Subway and you know do I want to you know uh, open up a BW3 I looked into BW3 and stuff but Mm -hmm. you know my criteria was and it was really about having the flexibility of um, saying, hey, if my kid, if I want to go to a Little League game, I'll have that ability to do that. So yeah. um, so my criteria was I don't want uh, employees. I don't want to have retail hours. I don't want to, um, you know, I want it to be more passive. So, 
in the 90s, it was late night television. I didn't have bigger pockets back then. <laughs> so, um, so late night television, you know, the guy would come on and say, uh, you know, no money down, buy houses. And I'm like, you know, if these guys can do it, I can surely do it. So okay. um, I just started researching it. We ended up selling the company in 96, got married in 93, 27 years later, still married. Um, uh, but uh, we sold the company. I went and um, moved out to Kansas City and uh, we went out there as an adventure and we ended up, um, I was still interested and I was coming back to Ohio for my customers still and we ended up um, coming across this guy that was doing um, investing and started talking to him and in 98 uh, Susie was, um, my wife was pregnant with our son Matt and um, said, man, I'm hearing a lot of good things about Columbus. This mm -hmm. is 1998, okay? Because you were already in Ohio, but not in the Columbus area? When you we were, were, well, we moved to Kansas City. So I, my first job was in Dayton. Yeah. And then I went to Kansas City for two years. Traveling back to Ohio. Traveling back to Ohio for, because all my customers were here. So I was a VP of over there, but you know, I still kept in contact with my clients. Mm -hmm. And um, so when we moved here, uh, it was 98, so we moved into our new house we built on January 15th. Um, I bought a 15 unit, I bought a 24 unit, and my kid was born in 90 days. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, let's awesome. get it, do it, get after it. So uh, and then I learned that I didn't know shit about yeah. real estate. Yeah. So, um, and it was. Uh, that's a good way to learn. That's a good way to learn, yeah. <laughs> Go manage campus yeah. stuff where you're uh, managing babysitting yeah. kids and the helicopter moms. So um, it wasn't for me, and I was probably undercapitalized for those buildings because they needed a lot of work. And that's probably a, one of the most common things I see with investors is they're undercapitalized for the CapEx mm -hmm. stuff. So, um, but I got out of that and then went into single family. Um, the guy that I was using as an agent asked if we want to start a brokerage, and we did. So, uh, started Solutions for Real Estate in 2001. Who who just asked one of their clients? He had to see I was a good something, client. know something. <laughs> Dude, I was a good client. I mean, just to ask one of your clients, hey, you want to start a brokerage? Well, you know, when I bought those properties, I was, I got the move back home. I actually opened up my office in the brokerage, the real so estate office. So, you knew office. each other beyond. So, we knew that. Okay. So. I wanted to learn the business. I was going to do what I was doing, you know, for inmate phone business all day, you know, for the rest of my life. So I was, I'd hang up from a conference call and then we'd go look at houses or, hey, you want to start buying single family? And I started with him. And yeah. So after three years, he's like, hey, let's go start our own. So I started the brokerage in 01 and uh, then I went and got my license. I didn't have a license yet. And, um, and uh, as we were growing, we were attracting a lot of real estate agents at that time. And the, the investor side was, I was just trying to build my own portfolio. I wasn't trying to, property management was kind of an accident, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but we also found out at that time that, um, um, you know, we're already doing the work. You know, do you know an electrician? Can you help me fill the property? We were really good at finding deals. Again, this is before, you know, everything that we do now but right. um but uh so we ended up just take you know if we helped you find a property we'll manage that property for you so okay. you know we were up to about 130 units um the guy that I was partners with he wanted to move on so one of the other agents in the brokerage bought him out three years later i ended up buying him out and um at that point, you know, Matt was in high school and Your my son. kid did end up, yeah, yeah, he did end up playing baseball. Yeah. So I wanted to be around for that and, you know, he's growing. And um, so after he graduated, we kind of retooled everything that we did. You didn't know me before, you know, my previous life, but um, we, um, we just, Susie and I, my wife, she's our accountant too. Uh, we decided just we're going to re-engineer everything. We redid our website, procedure manual, all that stuff, and it was just time. Um, when was that? That was 2000, 
16 and 17. Okay. So it's not that long ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, the we thought that I always felt like we were we were a little bit better than the average in property management here in Central Ohio. Mm -hmm. But I started going to national events, which you know you guys sh we all should do to see what everybody's doing for best practice. And uh, you know, feeling good, and then all of a sudden we start hearing all these people doing stuff, and we're like, we're like five years behind, you know? <laughs> like what? Oh, technology that we're using, you know, it's something as simple as having a portal for an owner to log in to see their account, stuff oh, like yeah. that, and it's, yeah. it's little stuff like that, but it was what people were asking for. So we ended up just retooling everything, and um, really, you know, uh, really started grinding at that. And then I ran into Jeff Holtz, who brought home investors here to Columbus. Columbus. And he was saying, hey, uh, um, you know, I, I'm looking for a property manager. Can you tell me what properties to buy, which ones to keep? And he said, man, you should go out and do this home investor stuff. I'm like, dude, I don't have freaking time, yeah. you know? <laughs> and my wife's like, you don't have time to do this. <clears throat> but I knew, because I was putting those systems in place that I, I was starting to, you know, working on the business, not Come in up it. For air. Yeah, so I saw it, she didn't see it yet, but I was, I was starting to feel it, yeah. And uh, so uh, we went ahead with it, and then we started doing the home investor thing in '18. So it'll be ending up year three in February. Okay. Of next year. So, so you've got Lars, the sorry. brokerage. Oh, by the way, I've been buying properties too. <laughs> yeah. So you've got the brokerage, and then the property management company, as well as the home investors. Right. Home, home investors, and then I've got my own real estate portfolio. Gotcha. So four, I guess. So high school, Ohio State. Mm -hmm employee for a very short time yeah maybe three years what did you years? study in, in at marketing Austin? okay yeah how did you convince <laughs> your employer to let you buy into the company that's atypical um so they were my customer and they're like hey we're we're thinking about taking this statewide do you know of anybody that um that might want to be a sales rep. Okay, so you didn't work for the company that you bought into. No. Okay, I so see. Okay. they were looking for somebody, so I actually recommended three people, and I would interview them. Uh, coincidentally, one of my old bosses, I sent them over there. We actually managed for her today. Okay, you know? interesting. Yeah, yeah, and she's got like 25 properties. Nice. Killing it. Nice. Yeah, um, but uh, I. I knew what they wanted. Look, I don't have a mortgage. I don't have a car payment, and I wanted it. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I didn't know what the avenue was going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but it, I'll put my money on the line, and yeah. you know, it was one of those where, you know, this is 1992, three or whatever it was. No, it's before that, and 80s? it was. No, I know, right? <laughs> uh, but uh, it was one of those where I think I like in commissions I made like over a hundred grand. Well, they couldn't even afford to pay me, mm -hmm. you know. And I knew that, and I was I, I just kicked ass, yeah. you know. And um, they proved it, and you know they pulled me off the street, and all of a sudden I'm in billing. I'm in the middle of installs, you know. I've been in probably two hundred prisons, you know. Okay, why? On the right side. Why though? Well, we're doing installs. Installs of what? On phones. Okay. On inmate pay Prison phones. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. Make some friends in there. Yeah. Did you? Or visited old ones. Mm-hmm. Still have some pen pals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but it was a great experience. I mean, the Tim and George, um, you know, you, you start learning, you start learning little things that you don't know you're learning. You know, mm -hmm. George, um, he, uh, he told me that you want to get into a business that has recurring revenue, which real estate allows you to do. Um, that made sense to me. He actually had a 12 unit um, that he owned, so I kind of you know, watched from the side. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, but uh, and Tim is, you know, he's a technical wizard, and he was always the, the process guy, you know, so you kind of pick up things from as you go through life. but. We all did agree that we had to get out of it because right now it's a commodity business. And, okay. But um, then you sold. Then we sold. Yeah. 
So that was your first business. That was the first business. You know, we and I look back, it was a little bit of money. Um, it was enough to get stuff started, but it wasn't it wasn't life changing by any means. It was just like I can go start another business. It was almost a seed of experience for what you have now. Right. Yeah. Right. And you know, before I got started, you know, I studied. I'm I'm very conservative when it comes to starting a business. You know, I want to learn a lot. Um, and again, we didn't have the internet back then. So I mean, I took four years where I until I felt comfortable moving forward with a deal, um, a real, real estate, estate deal. Yeah, a real estate deal. And uh, but once I understood it, you know, I bought 39 units in 90 days. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then it was like, just shit, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And I thought I did. Yeah. And um, so those experiences are <clears throat> things that I talk to owners day in and day out right now. So. So you mentioned that you knew you wanted to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. When did you know that? Why, why did you know that? I don't know. I just, um, I think, um, I think it was, I, it was probably late high school. I didn't know what it was called then. You know, we weren't calling it an entrepreneur. Like, I own my own business. Okay, what does that mean? Right. And um, I had an uncle who's in the car dealership and or car business, and my other uncles worked uh, in that their business, and they started doing their own things. And um, my uncles, to watch them and do what they did. It was, uh, you know, it's like, man, that's cool how they're doing that. You know, whenever you were around my uncle Shannon, it was like everything was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and there was, there was a, I don't know if you want to call it sense of security, but it was always like things are going to get taken care of, you know. Um, but uh, <clears throat> I liked that feeling, and I'm like, that's, I gravitated towards that. So. Okay. And that was his personality or it was because he was in he was good i mean i remember having people you know i was 22 years old and i was going to go work for him in in uh you know through college he actually didn't hire me twice through there um because he knew better you know because uh, he's running a business but um i just felt like he um he what was the question you you mentioned that he was all he always felt like he was in control. Yeah, in the sense of security. And was, was that, that a product his of his personality, or was that because he had his... a successful business? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that was odd to me, you know, when I did work there, you know, people they knew that I was his nephew, but I did, I didn't get any special treatment. If anything, I was you know they made sure that I earned my keep. You know, yeah, I would be working in a on a you know with a customer or whatever, and my Uncle Hank would come behind me and give me a kidney punch. Nice. <laughs> and that's the way we roll, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the way my cousins and I roll, you know, that's what we do. But um, but that being relaxed like that, um, but I'd have employees come to me and say, your dad or your uncle is a, you know, he's great to work for. And, you know, he's just, he always took care of them. Yeah. And it might, you know, taking care of them is not necessarily giving them more money, mm -hmm. but it was, hey, I'm going to buy you lunch or, you know, all of a sudden, you know, he'd give him a hundred bucks or send something right. over. So yeah. was, like that kind of stuck with me a little bit. And right. sometimes I do that with our current staff, you know, you know, a month ago I brought everybody food, yeah. you know, yeah. when COVID. So right. um, just stuff like that. I want, you know, we make sure that we're, we're trying to do that. We're just do something a little bit special. Right. So we all know the buzzword financial independence. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to break free the chains, the W-2 job. Yep. The, I think most people think, okay, to do that, I need to own my own business. Is owning a business for everybody? I think it's more of the makeup of whether or not you can handle it. You know, it's not for everybody. Um, I have a couple of owners that um, I started working with and I'm like, you don't have the personality for it, you know? For real, um, for owning real estate. For owning real estate, let alone a business. Right. Um, because they panic about everything. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, early on, you don't know what you don't know. And even though with my guidance, I couldn't get them past it and they would be freaking out over something that's like, this is really not a big deal. 
in the you grand know, scheme. I, you yeah. know, I'm like, you know, you hired me to make sure that I, you can sleep at night, mm -hmm. and you're still not sleeping at night. Believe me, I know what I'm doing. Right. So, if you are having a hard time with it, maybe this isn't for you. Right. So, um, but. Uh, and do you think those like the personality is the same for like somebody who wants to own real estate versus somebody who would own a business? I think so. I think so. Um, and it, it's sexy to own your own business. And part of that is... But is it sexy? It is. <laughs> and it's, it is. It's sexy. Say it. When you're at a party and someone's like, oh yeah, he runs his own business. <laughs> Come it, on, you don't feel a little... Yeah, it's sexy like owning a boat. Like, you say you own a boat and you have your friends on a boat and it's a good freaking time. But then you're the one who's got to do all the work. That's right. Clean Pay the boat. That's a great example. Put that's gas a, in the that's boat. That's a great example. <laughs> storage. It is sexy on the surface. It is. But what is it like, really? But, <clears throat> but until you own the boat, you don't know that. Yeah. So the people that want to own a boat, it's still sexy until I own the boat. Mm -hmm. So now you've crossed over to owning the boat, mm -hmm. you know? And something breaks, and insurance. Well, it's just sitting there. Yeah, it's been sitting there for a month. We haven't even been in it. Right, you but know? I gotta write this check to right. an insurance company. Right. Yep. So, you know, a lot of it is, and same with financial independence, is the, it's the flexibility. And you know, like I said, I, I knew back in, you know, college yeah. that I wanted to create this life that I have the flexibility of doing that. Because right. I remember my uncles, mm -hmm. they had the ability to take off yeah. and go play golf right. on a Wednesday. Yeah. However, in their those early, guys- In their early 30s or 40s, not when they're 62. That's right. And those guys, now, they freaking work hard. Right. Mondays and Thursday nights, they are there till 10, 10.30. Mm -hmm. Then they go drink, close the bar, and they would be there before anybody else at 8.30 in the morning the next day. Yeah. It's like, how in the hell are you guys doing this? Yeah. <laughs> but they were, they were, there were three brothers that were feeding off each other, and there right. was a lot of high energy there. Mm -hmm. And as you imagine, the, my five boy cousins, all of us were being groomed for that business. So um, that's attractive. Mm -hmm. you know, and same with, you know, to your point about, you know, owning your own business and how hard it can be. That's what we're trying to achieve is that independence. Right. Um, of, you know, owning your own thing and having control, even though you know that you still have to put gas in the boat. So even though you coach and, you know, your three kids in baseball, your phone's buzzing on your hip right. and you're like, kind of drives you crazy you yeah. know a little bit but at the same time that's but I'm here I'm right here with mm -hmm. my kids right so let's just be present yeah you know even exactly. though I'm coaching third right now yeah <laughs> um leave your phone in the car by the way right yeah right so <laughs> so you know those dynamics change a little bit but the you know they outweigh completely on on uh, yeah you know. the dream is over time if you're doing the right things like we were talking about before, you set up systems, you get the right people in the right places so that you can put your head above water and concentrate more on living <clears> your life and less on operating the technical details of your business. Right. Steering the boat. And then, yeah. then you're your uncles. So, right. So, <laughs> and one of the things that, and they, you know, my uncles were mad about it because that was, <laughs> that's where they're hanging out. You know, that's, if they were not at work, they would be hanging out with each other. So right. it ended up being their job, and you know, I, I know they got into it. Yeah. You know, that's they're brothers, man. Yep. But um, the um, the business or owning a business and uh, owning real estate—it's all about again having control over what you're about to do. So want to do. let's assume that I'm a, I'm a person who, maybe I don't want to own my own business, but maybe I think I'm cut out for owning real estate. I haven't, ta I haven't taken <clears> the plunge yet. And it's because I have a shared vision and dream for my life, like the three of us do, mm -hmm. where I'm not in an office eight to nine hours a day mm -hmm. and I'm able to do what I want on a, at two o'clock on a Tuesday mm -hmm. afternoon. Awesome. What, can I, I just want jump that for into everybody. it? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I think it would make 
people happier and nicer uh -huh. and yeah but can I just jump into it or are there some things that I probably need to attend to in my personal life my financial life before I just go out and well, buy a 32 unit right right so I think that you know you got to have your house in order and when I say that it's not just financially it's uh, you know talking with my wife Susie about what I wanted to do and I you know like I said I talked to her about it for four years and she finally turned to me and said would you freaking buy something already because I'm tired <laughs> of you talking it. to me I about it right because we didn't have this yeah you know there was no out at that yeah, point you know, it's right. lonely at the top right right <laughs> so um but I also know that she's on that journey with me you know because now she's the accountant she's yeah. completely with which me, is huge which is huge right um and she's awesome so um so to to get in the buy-in at home that's a conversation and you know when i talk to new investors um sometimes i i might pick up hey can i include my wife on the phone absolutely yeah you yeah know, I, I want I, yeah because what happens with you and this, if you're on your own, you're going to bring it home and it's like, what's wrong? Well, we had to replace the burns today. It's 2,500 bucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, well I remember Mitch money? told me it could happen. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. That's a lot better. Exactly. So um, that's part of it. Um, do you have time to do it? You know, do you have three kids and you're going to go off to Las Vegas for four months? Can you do that? Man, well, that's that great. <laughs> right. <laughs> But I mean, you got a partner here, you right? Know? So boots yeah. on the ground, but you know you're picking up stuff, so you can do that today. Um, but financially, um, you know, I living through 2008 for me, and watching, you know, we had 52 agents and went to 25 in a matter of six months. Um, all of a sudden, incomes tight, and you don't know. It was kind of like when they shut everything down for COVID. Like, what does that mean? I don't mm -hmm. even know what that means. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's how like, long is this? How long is <laughs> yeah. this? We don't, and it's still not over. Yeah, we don't right? know. Yeah, we still. Yeah, man, if we could just get to next summer. Before right. it was like last summer, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, so 2008 taught me that uh, you could never have too much reserves. Um, whatever you're trying to do, whatever business. It takes twice as long and it costs twice as much. Pro tip. Just remember, <laughs> just remember that. Yeah. Um, I had a friend of mine that started a business. He sat on that thing trying to make it run for four years. And meanwhile, he still got his $600,000 house. It's like, dude, you need to cut and bail. There's got to be a point in time where you say, if I'm not at this, mm -hmm. I got to get out of it. Right. You know? And he was Sometimes we're hard-headed and we can't get past that. Right. But, um, you know, what I went through is uh, I was doing some soul searching and I was just going to the, what am I doing here? How much is enough? You know, I was trying to find out how much is enough because everything was bad. You know, uh, property management, we, we were making a little bit of money and actually got us through 2008, you know. But it was still, you know, tenants weren't paying and, you know, it was, it was bad. It was hard to run that business anyway. And we're about to run through that again. How much is enough as in what do I, act, what do I really need here? Yeah, what do I really need yeah. money-wise, yeah. Yeah, you right. know? Um, and um, because when I got started in 2000, 1998, I should say, um, it was really easy to get loans. It was, you know... Fog a mirror, you get a loan. Mm -hmm. um, hey, I uh, bought a 15 or 24 unit. They can turn around and um, carry a second for me. Banks didn't care. So I'd have five or 10% town and deal. Nice. What? Yeah. You know, you can't do that now. Right. <laughs> um, 2008. Exactly. Yeah. So, so probably shouldn't, but yeah. Right, right. <laughs> so, um, so it was really easy to get loans and stuff. And at that time, I'm like, man, I. I'm going to go out and get $10 million in property. Why not? Mm -hmm. It was a nice round number. I already had a million. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. You know, and then 2008 hit and then 2010 comes along and it's like, man, I'm just, I don't 
know if we're going to be open in 90 days, you know? And, uh, you know, I start searching and I found Dave Ramsey. Yeah. Okay. Are you a Dave Ramsey fan? For the most part. For the most part. Sure. Right? Yeah. The concept Dave Ramsey is. Dave Ramsey's got me some. Yeah. He's good he's, trajectory. Good yeah. trajectory. And it's, it reset me on, you know, why do I have debt? You know, why do I have so much? How much is enough? Right. Yeah. So I just started listening and like, okay. Um, and also I'm Googling how to set your real estate goals and article came up and it says how to set your real estate goals. And the first line was, if you need $10 million in real estate, you have an ego problem. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> Apparently I have an ego problem. Yeah. So, and it goes into describing on how much is enough. So it goes into how to figure out your magic number in real right. estate and it it was, I started doing my numbers and I do it like every three years. But basically I found out that uh, for every dollar of scheduled rent that you have coming in, so let's call it a thousand dollars, you can count on 50% of that month in, month out for the rest of your life. Once you pay off the mortgage, okay? Once you pay off the mortgage. Exactly. And the other fifty okay. percent is for taxes, insurance, insurance empties, property management, property vacancy, management, vacancy, maintenance, capex, capex all, all that stuff. It. So if you if so, it's not paid off, then it's some number above fifty percent or less than fifty percent. That's right. So I mean, if you're, you know, this is now we're getting to NOI stuff. You yeah. Know, um, um, but to your point though, if you need, if you decide that you need five thousand dollars a month to cover your expenses mm -hmm. and be financially free. Mm -hmm. What you actually need is $10,000 in cash flow. That's 10,000 scheduled rent, $10,000 in scheduled rent. So that's 10 properties and bringing in a thousand dollars a month paid off free and clear. paid off. But if they're not paid off and if you're leveraging those properties, then you can assume though that if, if you have cash flow, maybe your units are way, you have way more units, mm -hmm. you have way more right. scheduled rent. Right. If you're ca cash flowing two hundred dollars a door, for instance, mm -hmm. and you need ten thousand a mm -hmm. month, mm -hmm. then you got to multiply that by two. Right. Or if you need five thousand dollars a month, you got to multiply that by two. That's what your cash flow should be. Right. Okay. But like I said, it takes capital to grow. So if you're going to stick on that two hundred dollars and you got a loan on every one of them, your take two hundred dollars. How many units is that now? To get to 10,000? To get to fi your $5,000. To get to 5,000. Yeah. How many is it? Five, 25, 30 properties. So how much money do you have down for each property? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And all it takes is one hot water tank or one empty and you're wiped out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> I kind of saw that, you know, when I first got into it, I started asking the old guys cause we didn't have bigger pockets. Someone told me. Or beers in business. Beers in business. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks for the plug. Yeah. Someone, yeah. <clears throat> um, you know, a guy told me, he said, well, it's going to take you 10 years to make any money in real estate. And I'm like, yeah, but you understand. I'm, <laughs> right. I'm educated. I got stuff to do. <laughs> I got, yeah, I got shit to do. I'm, I, you know, I studied on it and I, you know, I respected the fact that I needed to learn it. And um, if you do the math, 1998, 10 years later is 2008. I wasn't doing anything <laughs> better in 2008. Right. Um, so it actually took me 12 years, mm -hmm. you know, before I felt like I was making money. So my real estate portfolio, I have 30 properties right now. My scheduled rent is 28.5. That's my top line number. On the nose. <clears throat> On the nose, because I just updated it. Um, and um, I've got nine to pay off. Okay. So, so do I go out? one paid off properties of 30. Yes. Yep. I'll be probably, and they're all, these are all balances that are coming down pretty fast. Um, so probably in three years, they'll be done. 30 plus paid off. 30 properties. plus yeah. paid off. So, <clears throat> but I've not taken a dollar from my portfolio because that's my 401k. I'm an entrepreneur, right? Right. You know, even though we just started one five years ago in the business and all that stuff, but 
my goal is with those properties they have the flexibility to go do whatever I want mm -hmm. and I'm doing whatever I want 10 years before my time yeah. but I've always told myself I'm more concerned about getting that paid off so I can do whatever. do whatever so and then even the home investor money that I make I don't pull any money out of that because I put it towards debt mm -hmm. on those properties so but, okay so <coughs> there's two sides of this yes there's the income streams mm -hmm. which I want to get back into but then there's also what those income streams have to cover <coughs> which are your expenses your everyday expenses my everyday expenses you mean to live here uh, to live uh -huh. uh, to support your family and not I want to get into kind of like your numbers but I think it's also key to hit that side of it where if you want financial independence there's some building and there's mm -hmm. also some subtracting mm -hmm. on the other side mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so two levers yeah so um, the building side I think I covered it with paying off my property as far as income coming in right yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, my property management business um, you know we did gross revenue of 2.8 million in gross revenue. That is a big but number. A, that's a big number, but a lot of that goes out back to the agents. Yeah. Because you know our split, it's not that much. Mm -hmm. um, some of it goes back to the contracts that we pay to do work. Sure. You know, 1.7 of that is maintenance. And a lot of that money goes back it's to paying the contract. So that's a high number. Heavy business. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you take that out, it's really the number really is probably nine to a million that I have income coming in and then I start paying payroll. Yeah. And I've got a decent payroll, <laughs> you know? I've got Jamie, mm -hmm. I got Ashley, mm -hmm. I got Josh. Mm -hmm. I have Diane who's out of the Philippines. So she's our virtual assistant. I have Julie, I have Susie and me. Yeah. So there's payroll that's coming out of that right. amount. Um, and then we go into the virtual assistance that we have, which is easy repair for evening hours, taking our calls. There's another one for um, Tenant Turner that does our uh, showing stuff um, that we're paying out. Our website, our all of our podcast, or not our pod, blogs that we do, and all yeah. the marketing. So um, all of a sudden, if you look at the numbers, I mean, if you take that, I mean, it's it's a single digit percentage mm -hmm. of what we're actually making. Yeah. Um, but uh, the, the profit from, from the brokerage, the way we do it is we actually take up, we look at what our profit is and we throw it all into our 401k. Okay. So I actually do profit sharing with my full-time employees. After you've already paid yourself. After we already paid ourselves. Yeah. And by the way, I wasn't doing this three years ago. Yeah. And I tell my employees, I can't do profit sharing um, every year. I don't know yet. But the way we decided to do it was we'll take our profit sharing and uh, we're just going to throw it at our 401k. And we give, obviously, our employees some of that money. Right. It's great. Um, based on what the laws are. Because sure. the laws are different the way you do it. So. Right. So income streams, you have you have the brokerage, mm -hmm. which is kind of like your most, the business you spend the most time in. Yes. People would call it like your vertical income stream. Okay. And then across, you also have your home investors business. Yep. And 30 rental properties. Yes. And that's kind of like the, the bulk of your income. Yes. And let's just take the passive income. Let's not count the brokerage. Okay. Are you at a point where that covers your living expenses your basic yes. living expenses yes okay <clears throat> yeah and did you get to like ring a bell or something when that happened <laughs> the the only time i ring a bell is when i pay off another property uh, mm -hmm. and it might be um we go out to you know north star or yeah. something yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. that's about it right um even though it is a long journey and you have to set those little goals up every time you do something like if you buy another property hey, ding, ding, let's yeah. do yeah. something yeah. special Absolutely. Um, so you got to, because it's a long freaking journey, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your so, expenses. so kind of when I started figuring out what our magic number was, you know, what we need to live on, 
you know, this house is paid off. We paid, mm -hmm. you know, let's get rid of that. And that, that's less money that I have to make. Um, but um, I just, I rounded up my number, you know. So I decided that 15 grand a month is plenty of income. Yeah. Uh, which is plenty of income. And um, universally, plenty of income. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, yeah. It's, and you know, it was only because I was already at, at that point, I was already at like 11. Yeah. And if it was nine, I would have probably stopped at 10. But it's like, you know, we, We're already as you, over, guys, yeah. you guys already know, I mean, you guys know this. You get to a certain point, well, that was, okay, well, let's, well, let's do it. I'm here, yeah. Yeah. you know, and while I can, yeah. you know, and I think a little bit of that upbringing for me, you know, you never know about the future. Yeah, sure. You know? right. So that kind of eats at you a little bit. Yeah. But, um, well, and Harvey and I did some numbers on like right, our, right. our minimum expenses. And it was like, we were already pretty well trending there. to cover that. Okay. So it was like, well, I guess we right. go okay. up yes. from there. <laughs> so was, was your decision though, based on your expenses or was it just, I'm at 11, 15 would be cool. Let's do it. That was more the latter okay. because <laughs> Because um, you were already covering. I was already covering, right? Yeah. And by the way, I had to pay taxes on that. Sure. Right? Yeah. So, um, you know, we're, we don't spend a lot of money. We live uh, way below our means. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we just, I don't know what else we could be doing. Right. You know, um, there's some freedom we're about doing, that. Yeah. We're, we can do whatever we want. Right. Um, so, catast cat catastrophic planning can be stockpiling money and earning more income, or it could be, let's just live really simply in case right. given catastrophe well, happens, I we think, don't need much. And I also think what, you know, here I am 55 years old and you, you're, you're, you're set in a certain lifestyle. You know, it's yeah. not like when you're in your twenties and thirties, you're kind of ramping up and all of a sudden you're hanging out with different people and all of a sudden you're spending more money and everybody's going on trips and you know we already we already stopped where we thought we needed to stop yeah and it wasn't like we made a decision it was just mm -hmm. like i'm i'm good you good you know if you want to <laughs> yeah. travel yeah. let's go travel more yeah and you know a couple of years ago before covid we were traveling and you know, with every through, let's go to Asheville. You know, yeah. let's, you know, let's go to Nashville. You know, Asheville. so Nashville. <laughs> that's right. So, um, I think I, you know, you you figured it out. But you know, I I was already at a certain number, mm -hmm. and I was so focused on paying off debt and just building the business to a certain point where I said, "All right, I'm at I'm at a good spot." Which you know, coincidentally. And you guys are about to find this out because you guys are trying to get to a certain amount and a mm -hmm. certain, you got to build it to a certain point. And you, you guys think you know what the size is. And I've had those conversations. When I said, if I can get to 300 doors managing, I'm going to be pretty good. Yeah. And then I got to 300 and, but man, 400. Yeah. <laughs> and now right. my new number is five. 600 right right 600 all of a sudden that changes other things because but there is a certain number that you guys need to reach well you'll have enough people that you're you guys are focused on exactly what you want to do because there's a lot of stuff that you guys that you have to do mm -hmm. to get there so you guys need to get enough business in place for you to hire somebody to do those things that you can't mm -hmm. stand oh yeah and then all of a sudden you're like, this is a good number for us. Yeah. And there's kind of a range, you know, there's a range in there somewhere. You're like, we can handle a little bit more, a little yeah. bit more. And then you, now you have a decision and that's, I'm, we're approaching that decision on the property management side. If, if we got to 600, which by the way, we're at 525. If we got to 600, when we get to 600, we have a decision to make. Mm -hmm. And the decision is, we need another layer. There's another layer of yeah. things. And at 55, do I want to do, do that? Do you want to add yeah. the layer, yeah. Right? Life is good, Yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. That's, I'm grateful for what my wife and I have built. Yeah. Why, you mm -hmm. know, we got everything's yeah. firing on all sides. You'll have to go back and find that article again. That's right, <laughs> right. Down with the ego, right? So. Right. 
So that's where you are now. Mm -hmm. I'm you're getting there. I'm you've, real close. You've, but you've come a long way. You've built mm -hmm. all these different income streams and It's a hockey businesses. stick, dude. Yeah. I mean, it's it's only happened in the last three years where it's like, wow. Right. Okay. And a 20 some year journey. Yeah. 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 And when, you know, I talk to new owners when they're coming in, they're like, yeah, I'm ready to start. I'm like, okay, awesome. Just this is a long haul. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I share my story with them and I, I just want them to, my job is to cut the years off. Yeah. You know, if I can help you guys cut off five years, I'm going to tell you how to do it. You right. know? Yeah. So, um, was there ever a point in that journey where you thought, where you wanted to just go back and work a job and just hide in a Never. cubicle? Go Never. back to the prison? Never. Cause <laughs> I, so I worked, you know, I, I went to work for the company that, um, bought us and then I jumped ship and um, started the brokerage and all right, money was depleting fast. Mm -hmm. and so I probably did that for about a year and I'm like, what I need to go back to work. Yeah. And I called them up and it happened to be the perfect position. I, I, I didn't have any employees and I go back to work for them. Okay. And um, I was given a national account and, and about six months into it, I'm like, I'm going to land a big freaking contract for them. And um, I said, I am not going back. Because once you guys, if you guys, if once you've tasted the freedom, mm -hmm. there is no way you guys, and you would think, man, I could be a great employee. I know it. No way. You're an owner. Yeah. You're an owner, man. <laughs> yeah. How could you not know what they want? Right. Right. But you go work for somebody else. Yeah. And you're like, but you're gonna lose customers that way. You know, it's like, there's a philosophy difference. It's tough, but yeah. when I, I landed a $51 million contract for them, got my bonus and said, see you later. And nice. I'm like, I'm not looking back. I'm gonna figure this thing out. Yeah. And of course you use that to drive yourself, so. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So are there systems or models that you have, unabashedly stolen or borrowed from other people that have worked beautifully in your life or business to get to where you are right now? I don't know. I mean, though, like I was mentioning Dave Ramsey, I'm not, I'm like all about him except for the debt on no real estate, right? That's yeah. where most people usually. Most, yeah, yeah, that's where we depart, yeah. right? Um, most real however, estate people, I should say. Right, yeah. and you know, there's the argument of, yeah, but you, you know, your returns are better and Dave Ramsey will argue, you know, your risk, you know, mm -hmm. you have more risk. And I kind of see that. So I did a spreadsheet of lowest to highest mortgages. So I have my debt snowball payoff mm -hmm. and I do that with my real estate holdings. So that was something that I focus on. And okay. that's, that's one of the things I've stolen. Um, I, uh, I think that keeping yourself educated um, keeps you motivated, you know? Um, like when we go to the- Education uh, is motivation. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> when we go to the convention for homebusters, mm -hmm. um, you get motivated from that stuff. Man. Hella motivated. You know, <laughs> yeah. so you're walking out of there and you're like, man, what am I doing? Yeah, I'm always right. like, yeah. you know, it's like, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. speaking of ego, you think you feel good about yourself? Yeah, go to you ain't shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you ain't shit, but yeah. All right, yeah. I'll take it. Right. That's how I get motivated, right? right? So that's why that's what we pay for. <laughs> exactly. But, um, but you know, I, I think back when Susie and I started going out and saying, what's best practice nationally? Uh, I mean, we walked out of there. I mean, Susie turned to me and said, why aren't we doing a thousand units? I'm like, I don't know. You do a thousand units? Jeez. <laughs> you know, let's go. And, <laughs> and um, but I mean, it's interesting. She's, my wife's very, conservative uh, for her to say that you know she's buying in mm -hmm. and you know every once in a while she'll say should we buy a property now I mean mm -hmm. it wasn't she wasn't against it but she was you know she didn't know yet yeah mm -hmm. just like all of us so um, but uh, but that stuff you know I think it just motivates you when you start hearing other people Staying doing educated. stuff and yeah. on top of it and so you Those know I see myself doing it till um, at least till I'm 70. 
Okay. You know, and I think it's Doing only what? because buying, real buying and yeah, um, you know, paying off my portfolio, you know, ask me when that's all paid off because then it'll be like, well, I'm going to add another thousand dollars <laughs> yeah. to you. Yeah. You know, I'll buy one more a year or whatever. And then all of a sudden I'll buy three in one year, whatever, you know. Um, but, um, you know, my son is going to be graduating college in a couple of years and he has a high interest in it. And um, I see that I could probably help him do that stuff. So nice. I can see him kind of mixing in with him. But, you know, I love what I do. So, um, and I, you know, my give back is to help other people and if like again if I can help people shave off years of getting there mm -hmm. um, awesome was, was that, that a conscious, conscious decision, decision to start, start kind of pouring into the lives and careers of other people I or don't think so I happened? think it just kind of all of a sudden I'm hanging up and I'm like I'm because especially lately in the last two years I get a lot of phone calls and people just want to talk and I'll take care of the That's people me. that, and you know, but, but here's the difference. And I was just going to say the people that are close to me, I will reach out and I will, you know, I will be there and what do we need? You know, I'm yep. in, right. It's the people that are calling me from outside and I just, you know, all of a sudden you're losing your own time and like, sure. what is in it for me? And yeah. Not that there has to be anything in it. You know, I like talking about it obviously, but you start getting calls and people are eating up your time. Right. It's like, I can't do that forever. Right. Yeah, time is valuable. All right, what is one thing if you could time travel and go back and smack your younger self in the face for that you would do? <laughs> You'll love this. I think, yeah, yeah. Doing okay, right? Uh, this is mid 2005, six, and I got a little bit of money on my hands and I go down to Florida. You don't know this story, but Go down to Florida and we're walking on the beach and we I walk up to this huge four-story water slide blow up water slide, inflatable water slide yeah. do you know this story I do okay so I'm like what the hell so my kids like man dad can I go on this thing I'm like yeah three bucks to go slide down this <laughs> hill and so I'm sitting there with a couple drinks I'm like counting the kids going down this thing I'm like this guy's making like three grand a day. And I'm like, what in the world? So I'm looking around and I get the number, I'm like start calling. I'm like, what are you guys all about? Yeah, we're doing this. We got a program that we're gonna uh, place these things throughout Florida. And um, you know, we'll manage it and you buy it and we'll split the profits. I'm like, what are the profits? And uh, well, you know, we think, you know, we can do exactly what uh, this place in St. Petersburg is doing. And, you know, it's probably making about 18 grand a month, mm -hmm. something like that. It was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right. So I went down there and met with them and I'm like, man, I'm feeling good. And I plopped down 125 grand. <laughs> for a water slide. That's for how much a four inflatable. story inflatable water slide costs. Yeah. 125 grand. Yeah. Okay. No. Yep. yep. I made about 15 grand. Oh, <laughs> that was about it. Lost man. my ass on it. Over what period Ooh. of time? Uh, it was about a two years, you know, just trying to place it. Yeah. What I didn't know was the guys that were managing it, they had their own. So they got their own place first yeah. before mine. Mm. Mine was always last. Yeah. So I ended up just selling it for like 10 grand. And Ooh. Yeah, it was beating like a dog. It was like just swallow it and go yeah so, how did Susie in the accounting department feel about that no no matter the accounting uh, department your wife yeah. department yeah uh it was not good but it was one of those where we don't talk about okay um under the rug but look what i've done baby <laughs> look, look at this now and you know, she's like remember the water slide yeah uh, no that doesn't come up that way that's good uh, that's good yeah yeah that one was one and um do you think, as, as you know, was that I don't just like, like a shiny object thing? No, or it was were you like actively looking you know what for the, the, the problem was I had the money and I made a bad decision because I had the money. And that's like the that's worse than not having money. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds stupid, yeah, but that's a big mistake, yeah. So if you don't manage like you're always scratching, yeah, 
then you'll make bad mistakes. Yeah, I often you know? think it's the same thing with your time too. Just because you have the money or you have the time doesn't mean you should buy it or do it. Dude, I was still buying properties. You know, I was still doing this and I should have just $125,000 and just, <laughs> I would have had two paid off properties. That's right. right. You know, at that yeah. time. And you'd have you know, seven left. It would have been, yeah. Well, it would probably, have, you know, just right. accelerated. Yeah. I could have been, you know, five left yeah, or whatever it is. Down in Florida right now. Right. So that was, that one hurt. So other than not buying a $125,000 four story water slide in Florida. Inflatable. Stupid. <laughs> right. Inflatable. <laughs> non permanent water Look slide. Look it up. The hippo. <laughs> the hippo? What, what does it take to have a happy, 25, 27 year marriage? Uh, communication and compromise, right? So um, I am very lucky. I'm, I'm a minor league player playing in the majors. I mean, mm. my wife is, wow. she's awesome. Um, she um, keeps me in check. She makes me a better person of uh, all your, you know, in all aspects. Um, I was wearing something different today. Wow. <laughs> but I asked. Yeah. I knew. So, um, but uh, I don't know. She's she's awesome. I mean, she, um, you know, she understands, you know, not only is she the accountant on that side of it. So, yeah. you know, I'm the one that, there it is. Mm -hmm. You know, tell me where it goes. And don't we have more money in here? Yeah, yeah. Don't, you know, it's whatever. Right. Uh, but, um, but. You know, a lot of times when I'm about ready to fire off an email, I'll have her read through it, and <clears throat> she she just makes me look good. So it's great. Yep. What? How is it working? With, I mean, it sounds like working with your wife. It goes well I for can't you believe guys. It is because yeah. everybody tells you it doesn't. I can tell you. Here's the thing. We know she knows not to mess with my. Not that she's even message she has no interest in doing what we're doing right now mm -hmm. <laughs> um and what i do out there and i have no i have interest from a kpi level um, yeah. how we doing and what's in the bank and stuff but um she likes that world you know it's is this is uh you know if you look at the disc program on what type of personality she right. is versus what i am right we're yin yang mm -hmm. that way um However, you know, she says every once in a while, hey, why don't we, should we be buying a property now? You know, so we both see that, so. Yeah. Um, because you've worked together for so yeah, long, and have been in yeah, this for so long, you yeah. kind of have a rhythm and a right. feel so, for it. So, I mean, we're on different floors here, we're working at home now. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, we would go work days where I don't talk to her the entire time, you know, and we're in the same office. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we have a rule when we get home, we talk for five minutes, let's not talk about work anymore. Yeah, you know? and, that's great. Um, and now that we're home and even more, I mean, we try and shut this thing down, yeah. you know, because um, it's more important. Yeah. So, but, you know. And she's, what about being a good dad? Um, just being there for Matt, you know. Um, Matt's, he's smart, he, uh, he's, you know, should Matt get in the real estate business or take over the property management? He's too smart for that, I mm. think. I mean, he's showed no interest and I think you have to show passion for, you know, that stuff. But, yeah. um, you know, I've wanted to be around him for everything that he did without being a helicopter, um, but, um, you know, just all you can do is love them. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yep. Good. Yeah. All right. So I chose this beer for us. This, this is awesome. Sonder I love the logo. Water. You like it? Yeah. So we're both <clears throat> baseball guys. Yeah. Yeah. And Even though I, I, I only played two years. <laughs> you coached? I coached. Yeah. You talk about it. Yeah. Are you watching the series? You're yeah. I am. All right. Okay. Yeah. I think Doc Who's in it? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> the Yankees? <laughs> So on the side of it, it says, this, just about happenstance, Sonder Brewing in Mason, Ohio. Sonder equals the is the realization that each person has a unique story. 
Which, I mean, that's why we're here. Yes, that's, that's awesome. Here. So, thank you. Where can people find you? What is the name of your business? Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> um, the name of uh, my company is Solutions for Real Estate. It's www.s4re.com. Um, obviously, that's the front end of our business. Uh, my email is Mitch Dominski at Gmail. And um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, we'll put it in the show underneath Down so below. that they can <laughs> spell Dominski mm -hmm. and Solutions for Real Estate, mm -hmm. s4re.com, which the is. Four. Yeah, the number four. which is the property management. Yeah, it's property management brokerage business. Slash, if you're trying to find an investment property or sell an investment property or, do or manage in, one. Yeah, yeah, yep. Give you a yeah, shout. we can help you find it, fix it, fill it. Right. So, or just, and I know from experience, and so do you. Just have a, a question about how do I do this? Should I do this? Right. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what not to do. So. Right. Um, but. Yeah, if I can help, that's my give back. I think it's it's what I should be doing now. So Right. Cool. 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 Yeah. Thanks, Thank you. Man. Thanks for your time. You yeah. guys are awesome. That's a wrap. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Again, thanks for joining everybody. My name is Harvey Jurgen. My partner Josh Hively. We are Simple Solutions Real Estate in Columbus, Ohio. Mitch Dominski was our guest today with Solutions for Real Estate. The website is www.s4re.com. That's S, the number four, re.com. Property management, buying, selling, need advice on real estate, what to do, what not to do. Hit up Mitch and his team at Solutions for Real Estate and they'll take care of you. As always, we want to thank Brian from Fairytale Films who does all our filming and production and creative work. He's a genius, he's competent, up, he's very reasonably priced. Hit him up if you need anything filmed or photographed. Again, thanks for joining and we'll see you next time.